Hello, Falta. We are back for episode seven of the Tombow Cunha. So make sure that you catch up on the playlist. It'll come up up here somewhere, I think, um, if you haven't listened to any of the other ones because we are jumping right in here. So I will share my screen. This is Tombow Cunha, the cattle raid of Cooley which is um, Joseph Dunn's translation from 1914. So we are on episode seven, The Youthful Exploits of Ku Cullen. Now this lad was reared in the house of his father and mother at Darchek, the oak house, namely in the plain of Merhevna. And the tales of the youths of Awen were told to him. For as much as in this wise Concord passed his reign ever since he, the king, assumed his sovereignty, to wit, as soon as he arose forthwith in settling the cares and affairs of the province, thereafter the day he divided in three. First, the first third he spent a watching the youths play games of skill and hurling, the next third of the day a playing drafts and chess, and the last third a feasting on meat and a quaffing ale till sleep possessed them all, while the while minstrels and harpers lulled him to sleep. For all that I am, a long time in banishment because of him, I give my word, said Fergus, there is not in Aaron nor in Alba a warrior the like of Concor. So that is the, that's Conor McNassa, who is the king of Ulster, who has exiled Fergus McRoy here, who's talking. And I mean, None of that really uh, describes warrior training to my mind, but anyway, whatever. So, um, and it says chess and drafts, but it's actually brand of and vehicle are the games that, which don't really translate as drafts and chess, but they are native Irish games, just FYI. And the lad was told the tales of the boys and the boy troop in Owen, and the child said to his mother, he would go to have part in the games on the play field of Owen. It is too soon for thee, little son, said his mother. Wait till there go with thee a champion of the champions of Ulster, or some of the attendants of Concord to enjoin thy protection and thy safety on the boy troop. I think it too long for that, my mother, the little lad answered. I will not wait for it, but do thou show me what place lies Owen Macha. Northwards there is, it is far away from thee, said his mother. The place wherein it lies and the way is hard. Schlieffuit lies between thee and Owen. At all hazards, I will essay it, he answered. So baby Cucullin is, not baby, but young, young boy Cucullin is checking in with his mother. He wants to go to the royal court. And his mother's saying, now nah, you can't really go because... Uh, you need somebody who's going to ensure your safety there. And he's saying, nah, not going to wait for that. The little lad answered, um, point me in the right direction. And she's saying, Asher, oh, sure, there's, there's a big mountain that lies between you and the court. And he says, right, well, I'll, I'll, I'll chance my arm, he says. The boy fared forth and took his playthings with him. His little lathe shield he took and his hurley of bronze and his ball of silver and he took his little javelin for throwing and his toy staff he took with its fire hardened butt end and he began to shorten the length of his journey with them. He would give the ball a stroke with the hurl bat so that he sent it a long distance from him. Then with a second throw he would cast his hurley so that it went a distance no shorter than the first throw. He would hurl his little darts and let fly his toy staff and make a wild chase after them. Then he would catch up his hurl bat and pick up the ball and snatch up the dart and the stock of the toy staff. Had not touched the ground when he caught its tip, which was in the air. He went his way to the mound seat of Owen, where was the boy troop. Thrice fifty youths were with Fulliman, Concor's son, at their games on the fair green of Owen. The little lad went on to play onto the playfield into the midst of the boys, and he whipped the ball between his two legs away from them, nor did he suffer it to travel higher up than the top of his knee, nor did he let it lower down than his ankle, 
and he drove it and held it between his two legs and not one of the boys was able to get a prod nor a stroke nor a blow nor a shot at it so that he carried it over the brink of the goal away from them. Then he goes to the youths without binding them to protect him. For no one used to approach them on their play field without first securing from them a pledge of protection. He was wheatless thereof. I don't know what wheatless means. W-E-E-T-L-E-S-S. -E -E wheatless. But um, he didn't give a fuck was basically what I'm reading that as. Then they all gazed upon him. They wondered and marveled. Of course they did. Come boys, cried Fulliman, Concor's son. The urchin insults us. Throw yourselves all on yon fellow, and his death shall come at my hands. For it is gesh among you for any youth to come into your game without first entrusting his safety to you. And do you all attack him together, for we know that yon white is someone of the heroes of Ulster, and they shall not make it their want to break into your sports without first entrusting their safety and protection to you. So Cucullin has wandered into this Gesh situation and their trainer who is, or is he their trainer? He seems to be their leader anyway, he's the king's son, uh, Fulliman. So he has, um, he's saying basically, you know, attack him and kill him. Thereupon they all set upon him together. They cast their thrice 50 hurl bats at the pole of the boy's head. He raises his single toy staff and wards off the thrice 50 hurries. Then they throw their thrice 50 balls at the lad. He raises his upper arm and his forearm and the palms of his hands against them and parries the thrice 50 balls. They throw at him the thrice 50 play spears charred at the end. The boy raises his little lathe shield against them and fends off the thrice 50 play staffs and they all remain stuck in his lathe shield. Now, if they're all out there playing hurling, I'm not sure why they, they, why they would have a ball each for a start. They'd have a hurl each, definitely. But they wouldn't have a ball each and they wouldn't be carrying around spears with them unless they were like, maybe it's part of their training armour or something. They have them like looped over their back or something. Maybe, maybe. Thereupon contortions took hold of him. Thou wouldst have weaned it was a hammering wherewith each hair was hammered into his head. With such an uprising it rose. Thou wouldst have weaned it was a spark of fire that was on every single hair there. He closed one of his eyes so that it was no wider than the eye of a needle. He opened the other wide so that it was as big as the mouth of a mead cup. He stretched his mouth from his jaw bones to his ears. He opened his mouth wide to his jaw so that his gullet was seen. Champion's light rose from his crown. So this is describing obviously Ku Cullen's contortions that happen um, when the battle frenzy comes on him. And there's a couple of descriptions um, through the text of this. So his hair is all stood up um, and there's like sparks of fire that are coming out every single hair. And one of his eyes goes really small, the other one goes really big. Um, and his, his head contorts basically, his mouth, some kind of snake thing going on. And then the champion's light rose out of his crown. So this is an otherworldly or magical happening that's going on here. Cucullin is not quite human. So it was then he ran in among them. He scattered 50 king's sons of them over the ground underneath them before they got to the gate of Owen. Five of them, Fergus continued, dashed headlong between me and Concor where we were playing chess, where we were playing fecal. Um, even on Ken came Fairhead, the chessboard of Concor on the mound seat of Owen. The little boy pursued them to cut them off. Concor sees the little lad by the wrists. Hold, little boy. I see tis not gently thou dealest with the boy band. Good reason I have, quoth the little lad. I had not a guess honour at the hands of the boy troop on my arrival, for all that I come from far away lands. How is that? Who art thou and what is thy name? asked Concor. Little Satanta am I, son of Sultan. Son am I to Dectra, thine own sister. And... Not through thee did I expect to be thus aggrieved. How so, little one, said Concor. 
Knowest thou not that it is forbidden among the boy troop, that it is a get for them, for any boy to approach them in their land without first claiming his protection from them? I knew it not, said the lad. Had I known it, I would have been on my guard against them. Good now, ye boys, Concor cried, take ye upon you the protection of the little lad. We grant it indeed, they made answer. So in case you missed that, Satanta is uh, the original name of Kukul, and that's what he was uh, given when he was born. Um, he calls himself the son of Sultum and Dectera, who so making him the, the nephew of Concor the king. So he, there's a couple of different options for Cuchulain's father, but I'm um, not sure actually in this version if it goes through that, but I think it might do. So, um, but if not, uh, there is, oh, I'm not sure where, I'm not sure which story actually. It, I'll put a link below to the story of uh, Cuchulain's parentage, if I can find it, I'm sure I can. Okay, so um, the little lad went into the game again under the protection of the boy troop. Thereupon they loosed hands from him and once more he rushed amongst them throughout the house. He laid low 50 of their princes on the ground under him. Their fathers thought it was death he had given them. That was it not, but stunned they were with front blows and mid blows and long blows. Hold, cried Concor, why art there yet at them? I swear by my gods whom I worship, said the boy, they shall all come under my protection and shielding, as I have put myself under their protection and shielding. Otherwise, I shall not lighten my hands off them until I have brought them all to earth. Well, little lad, take thou upon thee the protection of the boy troop. I grant it indeed, said the lad. Thereupon the boy troop went under his protection and shielding. A youngster did that deed, Fergus continued, at the dose of five years after his birth, when he overthrew the sons of champions and warriors at the very door of their own Lissendon. No need is there of wonder and surprise. Uh, Liss and Don are two different Irish words for forts, basically. So uh, uh, in their own homes, basically. No need is there of wonder or surprise if he should do great deeds, if he should come to the confines of the land, if he should cut off the four-pronged fork, if he should slay one man or two men or three men or four men, when there are 17 full years of him now uh, on the cattle lifting of Coolnia. In sooth then, we know that youth spoke out Conal Kernock, the victorious, and it is all the better we should know him, for he is a fosterling of our own. Well, now he was only five when he did all that, and he's 17 now. So, as this story is happening, he's 17. So, that is the youthful exploits of Ku Cullen, and we will be back again for uh, four. Let me just see what the next one is The Slaying of the Smith's Hound by Ku Cullen. So this is how Cuchulain actually got his name. So, and then there's the taking of ours by Cuchulain and the slaying of the three sons of Nechgena. If we don't do, I'm just looking through them here. Um, it doesn't actually say, yeah, none of them are Cuchulain's birth story. So if that doesn't come up in the next couple of ones, I will post a link to it, okay? And remind me in the comments if I don't, all right? So, Slongafool, and don't forget to subscribe and please hit the like because it really helps with the algorithm and telling YouTube that these are videos that you want to see, okay? And telling me, Slongafool.